Hello Acorns and welcome to Friday's English. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to create some speech between two characters, okay? So, from what we've read so far, we've actually read to the point where Tom and Mouse have gone missing. So, they've gone out, they've braved the storm cat to go and get the village some fish so that they can survive and have a good Christmas, okay? But so far they haven't returned and the villagers are becoming quite worried about them. They've all lit some lights and they're all hoping that the village that Tom and Mouse will return soon. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use some ideas from what we've read to create speech for the villagers about what they might be thinking and about how they might be feeling. So here we've got two of the characters. Okay, we've got a mother and a child, and I'm actually going to call this child Rose, and this is Rose's mother. You can choose to call your villagers whatever name you want, okay? Because we haven't actually been given names, we're just they're just called villagers. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to use what we know to create some speech for them. So looking at that image, I would say that Rose and her mother, they do look quite sad, they look worried. However, they've got the candle lit, and they're feeling quite hopeful, okay? They're feeling hopeful that Mauser and Tom will return by following their light, okay? So, thinking about that, you're going to create some speech, okay? So what I've done is I've thought of my ideas and I've put it into a plan. So I've put them into like a textile method. So in here, I've put exactly what the characters are going to say. I've not punctuated them yet because I've not got to that point. I've just planned out what my characters might say and I might I might write it out and I might choose to change it. This is just my plan, okay? So I'm going to start off with Rose talking first. So here is Rose on this side, okay? So I hope Tom and Mouse will return soon. That is what Rose is going to say. Exactly what she says is inside of the speech bubble, okay? Then her mum is going to reply, me too, it must be scary out there in the wild, see? And then Rose is going to reply saying, let's keep our lanterns lit to help guide them home. That is what I want my characters to say and I can continue and create more of a conversation, okay? So what I'm going to use now is the plan to punctuate my speech correctly. So if you remember, we use inverted commas for speech. So everything inside the speech bubble is what the character is saying. So that is what will go inside my inverted commas. So imagine you're popping it and you're going to punctuate everything that is inside of here, okay? You then must tell me who has said it and how they have said it, just so I know who is speaking. So here is an example of what I have done. I've used this plan, my ideas, and I've put it into sentences punctuating correctly, okay? So... Rose tearfully said, so I've started off telling you how and who is speaking. And because I've started off saying how and who is speaking, before I started my speech, I've put a comma, okay? So I've not just said that Rose has said it, I've actually described how she's saying it. So Rose tearfully said, okay? I've put a comma before I put the speech. So then I've put the speech, I hope Tom and Mauser return soon. So everything that has been said is inside the inverted commas because that's what was inside my speech bubble. So I, I open the speech with an inverted comma and I end the speech with an inverted comma. Before I end the speech, I put my punctuation to end it, okay? So I don't put it after the inverted comma, I put it before it, okay? So there's my first example. I'm going to show you my next example. So I, this time I've started off with the speech. I've not put who has said it first. So I've started my speech with an inverted comma. Capital letter at the beginning of all your speech. Me too. It must be so scary out there in the wild sea, replied Rose's mother. So again, all my speech, what the character is saying is inside the inverted commas. Before I ended the speech, I punctuated, okay? So I've put a comma there before I've ended it. I then put who has said it. So replied Rose's mother. Okay. I've then gone on 
So I've got my next example of speech, but before I've actually put that speech, I've just put a bit a bit of a sentence just to describe to the reader, readers what is going on, so it just gives them a bit more information. So carefully feeling sad, Rose and her mother began to walk home. Again, I'm opening my speech with an inverted comma. Let's keep our lanterns lit to help guide them home, whispered Rose. Again, I'm closing my speech, so everything inside my inverted commas is what the character has said. Before I put my inverted comma to close the speech, I've put a comma, okay? I've then told you how it has been said and who has said it, okay? So you're going to create some speech today. You've got to follow these important steps. Remember to punctuate only what is being said. So use inverted commas to punctuate only what is being said. So we start off with an inverted comma to open the speech and we close our speech with an inverted comma. We put who and how they have said it and then we do a new line for a new speaker, okay? We always start speech with a capital letter. So there are the important steps to remember. Good luck today and I look forward to seeing examples of your speech.